What up, this is Rama Screen covering movies, TV, and entertainment. How's it going, everybody? And here's my review of Marvel's Runaway Season 2! Woohoo! Um, yes, and it's premiering this December 21st on Hulu. Mm. Instead of the usual reviews that I do with the jump cuts and the edits and the me reading off the teleprompter, I'm just gonna do this. One take, one shot. So this will probably end up being one of my longest reviews <laughs> because there are 13 episodes, man. Um, my fellow Runaways fans out there would know or would remember that in season one, uh, Hulu did not drop season one in a full batch. You know, it's like it was on a weekly basis. And I believe it spanned over about a couple of months or so. Whereas this one... You can actually binge watch it. They're going to drop the entire 13 episodes on December 21st, I believe. At least that's to my understanding. Because thanks to Hulu for granting me the screener to the entire season 2. That's right. I've watched all 13 episodes of this new season. It kept me company during the Thanksgiving break. And I actually watched it tw the, the, the whole thing twice. Uh, the last time was last week. So I'm trying to refresh my memory as I go now. Uh, <laughs> um, so certain uh, certain rules here before we uh, we go with my review. Uh, first of all, I will be spilling sp some spoilers, but not major spoilers. Okay, I'm not gonna spill about uh, who survives or who dies or who kills who or who gets killed by who, but. I will be spilling some spoilers about certain locations or names of characters or where they are at that moment in the episode or in the season because you know I will I'll be I have to I have to describe certain some of the plot lines a bit but I'm not going to you know drop any major spoilers that would ruin um the surprise or your experience of watching season 2 um so yeah that's number 1 number 2 I haven't read the comic books, so if during the duration of this review you come up with some things or you come across some of my points where you're like, hey Rama, those details are actually from the pages. And I'll be like, thank you, but I haven't read the comic books run away, so how would I supposed to know that? So I know, because I'm saying this because there are some reviews of mine of some episodes of The Walking Dead where some of the commenters will be like, hey, Rama, but those details are actually from the comic books. And I'll be like, uh, I wouldn't know that because I haven't read or I don't read Robert Kirkman's books. Um, so what I mean is that cut me some slack because <laughs> I'm coming in from an angle or from a perspective of being a fan of the show Runaways, the TV series. Not the comic books, okay? Uh, so just a heads up there. Okay, uh, let's get right to it here. Um, whew, sorry, I, I just ate lunch, so I might be trying to hold my burp uh, from time to time. <laughs> mm. In season, season one is a bit of a slow burn. In season two, it moves actually pretty quickly. Uh, the reason being, in season one, as you remember... The writers were trying to set the whole thing up, you know, the, the, the set the pieces to place them. Um, not just the overarching arc, but also the relationships. You know, they're, they're trying to figure out, okay, so Alex has a crush on Nico, but turns out Nico has a crush on Carolina and vice versa. And, um, oh, is Nico, I mean, I'm sorry, is, is Chase and Carolina a thing? No, it turns out it's Chase and Girth that's a thing. Um, the same thing with the parents, you know. Oh my God, James is having an affair with Janet. And Victor is so pissed about it. Victor is so abusive to Janet and his son. And so um, Catherine and Jeffrey always have power trip that they, they go through. So that's why season one uh, feels like it takes its sweet time. Because it does take some time to put the pieces in place, whereas season two, everything is already in place. So the relationship is already set. Who is with who? Who is going out with who? Who's dating who? Who is still married to who? And stuff like that. Um, what is clear is that on the uh, from the get-go in season two, it's the parents, the parents, the pride, 
versus the kids. Now, the parents, of course, as you know, their master puppet is Jonah. It's still Jonah. So the first few episodes of season two, uh, I love this because the kids, you know, as you know, they're not from abuse homes. They're not from foster families. They're actually from privileged, well-off backgrounds. So the idea of living on the street, living out as, a, as runaways, that is something that they're not used to. That, there's, that is something that they're having difficulties adjusting to. Or, and, and that's what we, what we see in the first, first few episodes. And I love how heartfelt it is because um, at one point there's a tragedy that happens. I'm not going to tell you what that tragedy is. And, and Nico holds a Wiccan, a Wiccan funeral ceremony for that character. And you see the homeless people around them, you know, because they live in the skid row in tents at one point. You see the homeless people coming together to surround the kids. And the kids are like, whoa, what's going on? Why are they, you know, we're strangers to you. But the, you can see the homeless coming because the homeless notice that there's a funeral. So they 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 give their offering, whether it's fruits, whether it's, it's dolls, whether it's I don't know whatever objects they put they put put it on the plate, and and then you see also Girth Girth is a social justice warrior among them, and it hits her hits it's all of them pretty hard, the real the realization of reg, the suffering of regular folks because prior to being runaways they live in this bubble right they live in this community the faith community and the private school so now their eyes are open like oh my oh my goodness you know to see actual suffering in person and then the, you see the homeless people actually coming to, together in solidarity that like there's a sense of community that they even accept the kids as as one of them you know it's just so heartfelt you know i think the writers did a pretty good job there you know because it's a subtle it's a subtle but impactful way of addressing homelessness issue to teen audiences. Um, fans that watch the show would be like, you know, because this is something that's done in a way that doesn't hammer them in the head and that doesn't preach them or shove them down their throats. And I think it's very subtle and yet very powerful. So homelessness is an issue that I personally am passionate about and very feel very strongly about. And I think it's done in a really really sensitive but powerful manner by Runaway Season 2. So kudos to them. Um, at the end of Episode 1, also, they stumble upon this underground mansion. Oh, my God. I'm like, of course, of course, it's a mansion. <laughs> How convenient. <laughs> it's so spacious and roomy, you know, not just for the six uh, of our heroes, the kids, but also for their dinosaur. Oh, man, of course, of course. And then... The, the mansion is located at Griffith Park. I go to Griffith Park pretty frequently. I don't know about you guys because I live here near L.A. Um, I go there to hike. I go there to the observatory. So the next time I come back there, I'm going to go to that spot where I think, you know, where the underground mansion is located. I think it's, you know, one of these years it would be like a tourist spot for Runaways fans. You know, they would go there just like, oh, that's it. And then they'll take picture there and stuff like that. It's pretty cool. Um, and also Alex finds work with Darius. Darius is, of course, the old friend of Jeffrey from the old days, you know, because Darius moves on to do, you know, his criminal ghetto stuff, whereas Jeffrey moves on to do, um, beco or becoming a businessman, a wealthy man, but also still a criminal silently. <laughs> so... And Darius uh, helps Alex with some money because the kids need money to buy food. And that's where Alex comes across this lovely girl named Livy. Livy? Livy? Yeah, Livy. And, he be and she becomes his girlfriend uh, for a short while. And I like that. I like that. Because as you know, in season one, Alex's feelings for Nico was not reciprocated. For the obvious reason. Right? Because Nico has the hots for Carolina. So as a nerd, you know, I was like, oh, come on, give Alex a love interest. And I was like, yes, a win, a victory. Alex gets a love interest <laughs> and a new hair for a short while. It's pretty cool. Um, there's also a scene in which Nico and, and Molly and Carolina fight off uh, Nico's mom, Tina, for the staff. 
uh, and it happens by the pool in their yard. And I think that's the moment in which, you know, if you had any doubts about whether or not there's animosity between the parents and the kids, that fight scene, which you, what you're going to see in season two, that that fight scene was pretty much the line or or the moment in which it's clear now. It's clear. There's no coming back from it that they're on the opposing side. They will, that they will clash, parents and kids. Kids will see their parents as nothing more than murderers. Um, at least on the case of Nico, Molly, and, 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 and Carolina. Carolina secretly builds relationship with Jonah you know, because they have this connection. They both can can glow like angel. <laughs> and so there's that as well that you can expect or you can anticipate. Um, now, the first seven episodes, uh, excuse me, let me just have a drink here. The first seven episodes, you still deal with what are we going to do with the whole the the dig the dig the big dig the the tunnel you know the one that can threaten California to break off into the ocean remember um, because Molly's parents in her VCR in their last uh, you know Dying Testament VCR video says that there's something living or there's a living entity there's something alive in that dig in that tunnel and so the first seven episodes is about that you know because Jonah is is dying he is like oh my god he has, he's trying to get Victor because Victor is in this limbo place. Um, he's trying to get Victor, which is the smartest of the pride, to help him figure out a way to, to stop him from dying so that he won't have to kill another runaway teen because that's the only way for uh, Jonah to regenerate, um, to keep living forever, if you will, eternally, until he can get the technology needed to to get that whatever thing that is alive from the dig the tunnel out and then and then so so he can go back home um that's the idea so that's the the overarching arc for the for the first seven episodes of season two the last six episodes all right the second half of um season two those episodes deal with the aftermath of the first seven. It's, it deals with, or they deal with the consequences of the first seven. You know, um, of course, throughout the whole thing, the parents still try to find way to, to, to get their kids home. That's why part of what happens in the second half of season two, um, now that, now that, uh, the whole dig and the tunnel thing is behind them. Um, they can focus back or refocus on trying to get their kids again. And one of them involves this dirty cop um, who replaces the other dirty cop. And this new dirty cop is vicious. Is more like he, he's willing to hurt. And he goes to the to underground to the to their underground mansion, and you see Nico. Um, using her staff, trying to shield the mansion, you know, trying to make the mansion invisible, but she can only hold it for so long. And and the whole thing is so action packed. You see, after so many episodes, you you kind of you've kind of grown to liking this new place of theirs, this new you know mansion. You know, I mean, it has its own car too. How cool is that? You know, and of course, it's probably there's probably rats infestation in there, but but it's still a cozy place. So to see that place being somewhat destroyed by this evil force is, I mean, like, it's like, oh man, you don't want to see that happen. You know, it's like, you, you want the runaway teens to have a home. Um, but yeah, you'll see that in, I think, episode 10 in the hostile takeover. Now, as I'm winding down to, to my final conclusion of this review, I just want to say that also, um, as I mentioned, because the relationship has been set, you know, who's with who, who's going out with you, who's dating who, you know, and stuff like that. So this season two, as far as relationship drama is concerned, um, now we see 
how tough those relationships can work or test the the characters. You know, they they the relationships their relationships are put to the test. You know, Nico and Carolina, something happens between them when they go like, oh my goodness, you know, they're on shaky grounds. The same thing with Chase and Girth. It's like, are we gonna survive this? Are we gonna survive as a couple? I mean, can we can we trust each other? You know, can we can we get to the point where we don't keep secrets from each other anymore? So, and and so that's what you uh, can look forward to as well in season two. The same thing with the parents as well. Um, it's like we got to get ourselves from under the thumb of Jonah. I'm sick and tired of being bossed around by Jonah. Let's let's put aside our differences and work together as a team. You know that's the same thing too with the the Runaways. There's a there's a point in which Nico wants them, the whole gang, to practice their powers, to practice their skills. Of course, uh, in the case of Alex, he's a he's a hacker, so that's his power. Uh, and and Chase has that you know has those gloves. So and it's such a I love how it's not smooth sailing. It's like rough around the edges sort of thing. It's like oh they they their practice always doesn't end up as uh, as what they planned it to be. It's like oh my god I I shoot that dummy too hard whatever. And I love that it's it's so. Um, and Molly herself, Molly always sneaks out in the middle of the night to beat up pimps and beat up bad guys out on the streets because she feels like I gotta put this strength power of mine into action. You know, I'm I, I've been given this power. I gotta I gotta use it. And that's also the thing that leads um, the new character Topher to the underground mansion. Topher, I looked it up. Topher, uh in the comic books, I believe, has some vampiric abilities or a vampire-like abilities. In this one, in season two, Topher is this handsome fella who has similar powers to Molly. So Molly develops certain, like, hey, he's my like he's my big brother, sort of thing. Like, yay, yeah, you know, they both can speak Spanish, so they can relate. Um, but Topher is not all around good guy because the thing that gives him that power that the yellow eyes thing is uh injecting himself with an element so in a way he's a junkie so that um so that you know because of that he becomes a liability and so he gets kicked out of the group um but before that happens Topher does help um the runaways with a mission Involving the Atlas Academy, so they go back to the academy, and 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 Topher helps him out. Topher also helps out with uh, dumpster diving. He's really good at finding food, um, and you kind of wonder if they're healthy or not. But uh, hey, you know, uh, desperate times for, calls for desperate measures, right? So you gotta eat. <laughs> um, and also, what's interesting about the first seven episodes of season two is that. There is a mission that happens in each episode. Sometimes uh, the runaways will be like, okay, uh, the three of us will will rescue that character. Uh, and then, for example, Carolina is like, okay, good, uh, but I got to do this. Sorry, guys, I can't join you today. And then there will be another, uh, another day we'll be like, okay, so four of us, let's do this. We got to steal that object from that place. And then Nico will be like, yeah, good, good, awesome. More power to you, but I got to take care of this real quick. And so that, <laughs> it's so cool. It's so cool to see them stumbling along the way, but trying and trying again to be a team, you know, not just with their powers, but just with their cooperating with each other and and, and understanding each other and putting aside their their, uh, you know, maybe their hurt feelings or whatever to work together as a team, and it feels like a procedural show. You know, procedural show. Procedural show is what uh, a series that you see on major networks where uh, a case would happen and end on that same episode. You know, start beginning to end. So there's a mission in each of that episode. In the first episodes of season two, there's always a mission. It's like, 
and you, it's so fun to see like okay if you go to the new episodes like okay what will the runaways be doing today what what mission will they accomplish in this one it's so much fun and and lastly you know the parents and the kids even though they're on op opposite sides even though they're against each other you can tell even the kids they 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 they're like okay guys but we are still kids we are still teenagers so we still have desires to go to college you know girth is looking up at colleges and we still have teen things that we want to do and we you know we can't deny us of that you know um otherwise we won't have a childhood or a teenhood um so one episode that i like is that molly has her quinceanera <laughs> that is the episode 11 and i love that i love that she's so She's so ecstatic about having her quinceanera at the age of 15 and the rest of the gang chips in and helps out. And it's so, oh, it brings so, the feels, man, such warm feelings you feel seeing seeing these characters just like becoming a family, you know, like um, at one point though, uh, Chase, because, you know, Chase is the only person out of the group who still, because you know, the rest of the group is like, our parents are evil. And that's it. You no, know, there's no no more debating that. But Chase is the one that's still like, oh man, I yes, my parents killed, but at the same time, they're my parents. You know, I can't just like part ways from that. I'm still gonna be connected. I'm, I'm biologically connected to them. You know, I, he's still my dad. My dad still needs me. So Chase is the only one among them that's that 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 still has that. Um, the second half. Of, of season two also deals more with uh or some of it deals with the faith community um uh what's the name of the character frank dean who's trying to hold on to his power because at this point leslie says hey what happens in the first seven episodes that's in the past that's in behind us now now we have to dismantle this faith community because it's a lie and people are believing in this lie it's freaking scientology kind of cult you know we gotta break this apart but frank dean is like no no I'm a, you know, you know me, I'm a washed up actor. This is the only thing I'm good at. You know, people actually look up to me like I mean something here. And so Frank Dean becomes the bad guy in some of the episodes. And that propels also another mission, you know, by the kids to rescue Leslie. And so um, overall, uh, I want to say this has been a fantastic new season two of Runaways. I enjoyed it very much. I... Yes, the powers thing, they're cool to see, right? Uh, Carolina glowing or Chase using uh, his military gloves. Molly with her super strength pushing, you know, the dinosaur, you know, up or, or the hill or whatever, you know. And then and, and, and Alex with his hacking. It's always cool watching those powers in action or at play. But I tell you this much, the thing that hooks me, the thing that, gets me addicted to season two is those relationship dramas is those those juicy parts is like oh my god are they gonna break up or are they not gonna are they gonna stay together it's like oh what is this Topher dude oh is he jealous of Topher now in other teen dramas out there it would probably be done in a cheesy regular uh predictable you know generic by the book kind of way you know, Dawson's Creek kind of way. You know, no offense to Dawson's Creek fans out there. But in Runaways, it's done in a very non-pretentious, very genuine way. Like, like, I mean, they talk like regular teens. You know, they don't, they don't have, man it doesn't, it doesn't feel like manufactured dialogues. You know, it's like, it's like something you hear teens say would, or things teens would say and teens would do. And so, um, yeah, it's such an honest and such like, and, and and you like the character so much. You care about Nico. You care about Molly. You care about uh, Leslie. You care about Catherine. Yes, even the Pride members too, uh, especially Dale and Stacy, who are just absolutely hilarious. Dale and Stacy provide some of this show's most amusing moments. Um, Stacy at one point even tries to poison Girth to get to try to to get Girth back. And that's an you know a whole other story in in, in and of itself, um, and so so you see them 
the kids learning about each other, growing together and figuring each other out. You see the parents also like, you would think that they, you know, by the, by this time they already got each other down pat, but no, it turns out it's like, oh my God, you're still keeping that secret from me. Oh my God, what did you do? I was like, oh my God, that's not the person that I know of you before. Like, I, you're, you're this strange, you know, like get away from me. So there's that thing too, where they, that's the, that's, the character development, the character's drama in this show is so juicy and so good and so irresistible and so inviting. That's the thing that really hooks me about Runaway Season 2. Yes, on top of, you know, watching Nico using her staff in the coolest way. By the way, the staff also kind of corrupts Nico in, in a, a bit. So there's that thing also where they say, oh, it might look like Matt Mickelson's character in Doctor Strange. I don't know if there's a connection there. Maybe it's just a, co a coincidence. But that in itself is also interesting. But yeah, the drama is so juicy. I can't wait for you guys to watch it in its entirety. This season two comes out December 21st on Hulu. So again, Hulu. And Marvel, thank you so much for granting me the screener for season two. I love it. A plus, great 10. <laughs> Perfect 10. This is the best runaway season yet. And um, by the end of it, they actually split up. And I was like, oh, I, I'm so, it, this, this show is so good. I don't want it to end. I, re I kid you not. I do not want it to end. By the, ep by the end of episode 13, I was like, is there an episode 14? Let me let me watch it. Let me watch it. And I guarantee that you're going to have as much fun watching it as I did. So thanks for tuning in to my review of Runaway Season 2. And as always, please subscribe to this channel and ring the bell so you can get notified whenever I post new videos. And uh, if you can help support this channel, please do so at patreon.com slash ramascreen. That's patreon.com slash ramascreen. Let's rock this.